Okay, guys, what we're going to go over today is basically reverse dieting. What is it? We're going to go over the three people who it's for. We're going to go over the long-term consequences of of low calorie dieting. We're going to go over low energy availability. What is that? We're going to go over how do we put all this together, this reverse dieting strategy. We're going to go over metabolism as well. So get a pen and paper, take notes, ask questions. I cannot see any people commenting just yet. That's totally fine. I understand it. it's early for some of you, but I would encourage everyone, if you're watching this live now, can you comment below hashtag live? If you're watching this on the replay, can you comment below hashtag replay? I do want you to get engaged. I want everyone to get engaged there. So just pop in the comments below, pop in the chat. How was your week? Did you get your meal prep in? How many workouts did you get in? It's really important. How many steps did you get in? Let me know in the comments below. Personally, I'm just taking advantage of the hot weather, warm weather here in Ontario. It's getting warm, so I did get out. I got more steps in. I did more cycling. I did more golf. I did more walking. I got vitamin D. But what about you? Did you take advantage of the, the warmer weather where you are from? I want everyone engaged. I want to know what your thoughts. So, <clears throat> what is reverse dieting? Does anyone know what it is? Comment below again. What's what's your kind of thoughts on reverse dieting? What what's your interpretation of, of reverse dieting? What is it? It's basically it's when we increase your calories in a slow and increment incremental manner over time. Okay. The goal is to increase your metabolic rate, which is your metabolism, so you can diet on higher calories down the line. That's what basically reverse dieting is. Does that make sense? Comment below if that makes sense. The, the definition of reverse dieting. So there's three people who on our program we use reverse dieting on. Three people, three situations. I'll go through this right now. So the first situation where we use reverse dieting with our clients is at the end of a fat loss phase. So you've lost all the weight. You've lost 30, 40 pounds. Then it's imperative, it's so important to have an exit strategy because if you don't have a plan for after the diet, then you're going to gain all the weight back and more. Here's a damning statistic, everyone. 95% of people who diet, they gain all the weight back and more. So we don't have a weight loss problem. We have a weight regain problem. Up below, you've lost a lot of weight in the past, but you've always regained the weight. You've rebounded hard. Let me know. It's so, so common. So you have to have a plan for after the diet. This is called reverse dieting. I'll give you an example. When I was competing in my men's physique shows in, back in 2016, I done three different shows. My first show, I lost 30 pounds in the space of 12 months. That's very aggressive dieting. I literally starved myself for three months straight. I did not do any diet breaks. I did not do any refeed days. I just basically, for me, my deficit was 2,000 calories a day. I was literally starving. I was working two jobs. I was working 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. on a construction site, constantly moving. So my meat was high. I was constantly burning calories up to 25,000 steps a day. And then in the evenings, I used to train my friends as a personal trainer from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. So I was constantly on the go. I was constantly burning calories. However, obviously that's not healthy. After my first show, I went from 205 pounds to 175. So that's 30 pounds. But I did not have an exit strategy. I did not have a, a reverse dieting strategy to get myself out of a fat loss phase. So I gained 25 pounds 
in four days. I'm not lying. I gained 25 pounds in four days. I literally went from eating 2,000 calories a day up to 4,000. I was just so starving. I wanted to just eat all around me. That's not healthy. So I literally gained 25 pounds. It wasn't all fat. Maybe like 15 pounds was fat. And I actually, this is called post starvation obesity. So that's why, that's why a lot of people, they binge and starve, starve and binge and go on restrictive diets and then they lose weight and then they gain all, all the way back and more. If this sounds like you, let me know. There's two people online, let me know in the comments below. Have you ever done that? Lost a lot of weight and then rebounded pretty damn hard. That was me, I've done it before. So, have you ever seen, we've all seen the before and after pictures yeah, of people who lost 40 pounds. Have you ever seen the before after after pictures? This is where people, you see people, they lost 40 pounds and then they gain 60 pounds because they don't have this reverse dieting strategy. It's a very powerful strategy that you need to do at the end of your fat loss phase. Otherwise, you'll always stay losing and gaining for the rest of your life. So when you lose this 30, 40 pounds, it doesn't stop there. The most crucial, most important part of dieting is that after, after diet, after the fat loss phase, because imagine, imagine guys, 95% of the people who diet, they gain all the way back and more. Uh, that's shocking. That's why we have some clients in our program for over two years, because it doesn't, it's not all about the fat loss phase. It's about diet breaks, it's about refeed days, it's about reverse dieting, it's about maintenance phases, it's about the optional muscle building phase. It doesn't just end. So that's the first situation where we use reverse dieting. Is that at the end of the fat loss phase? Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments below if that makes sense. The first situation, the first type of person where reverse dieting is used. Moving on to the second type of person, the second situation where we use reverse dieting <coughs> is, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> if a client is coming to us, <coughs> sorry guys, it's very much over. If a client comes to us um, and they are maintaining their weight at a very low calorie intake, then it's not in their best interest to be in a fat loss phase for the overall long term health. Think about it. We do have a lot of men and women coming to us, maintaining their weight at a very low calorie intake. We're talking 1,400, 1,300, 1,200 calories. We have women maintain, maintaining their weight on 1,000 calories a day. So let me just put this in the proper perspective. 1,200 calories is the calorie needs of a two-year-old two year child. Now, you're grown women. You're grown men. So it's not healthy to stay that low. <clears throat> and I'll go into the long-term consequences of low-calorie dieting in the pit. So that, that's the second type of person that does reverse dieting because they're just, they're not in a healthy place to start a fat loss phase. Think about it, if they were to enter a fat loss phase and they're maintaining on 1,000 calories a day, they have to eat 700 calories a day or 800. That's not unhealthy for your overall health, your hormones, your adrenal health, your gut health. Uh, it's just not sustainable, right? Let me know in the comments below. Have you, there's, there's a lot of people online right now. I'm on Zoom, but I can't see on Facebook. Let me know how low in calories have you been in the past? Let me know. So I hope that makes sense. I'm, like I like my analogies, okay? The analogies I use like, okay, what's needed for fat loss? What's needed? The number one thing needed for fat loss is a calorie deficit, of course, right? So if you're watching this and you're a woman, you're thinking, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm maintaining my weight on, on 1,200 calories a day. The first thing I would say is, are you really eating 1,200 calories a day? What about the weekends? Are you tracking oils, sauces? creams, cocktails, alcohol, sugar, cream, 
you may think that you're maintaining on 1200 calories a day, but you're probably eating maybe 2,500 or 3,000 on the weekends, which is knocking you out of a deficit. So you're not in a calorie deficit. So that's the first thing you need to do. You need to be honest with yourself. Are you tracking, honestly, are you for seven days a week, not five days a week? But there are cases, and I completely understand, where there are women and men maintaining their weight at very low calorie intake. So the analogy, another analogy I'd like to use is you cannot take water from a bucket that's empty. What that means is we need something to pull from. If If you want to lose weight, and you genuinely are just you're at 1,200 calories maintaining, you have to go 800 to, to, to pull something to lose weight. But there's nothing there to pull from. But if you're overeating, if you're a woman or a man overeating, like 3,000 calories a day, 2,500, then it's a lot easier for us to put you into a fat loss phase because there's something to pull from. That's your deficit. We start you off high. We always start off our clients on as high or calories as possible. Why? Because dieting, hormonal adaptations kick in, metabolic adaptations kick in, your body adjusts, your hormones uh, down-regulate, your metabolism down-regulates, it adapts over time. This is why we always start you off as high as possible. But if we start you off on low, imagine starting off on 1200 calories a day, and your body adapts, your metabolism adapts, you have to go down to 1100, and then one top. That's not healthy, but remember, the other analogy I use, 1200 calories, it's the calorie needs of a two-year-old child. It is the second situation where we use reverse diet. It's for clients that are not in a healthy place to diet. The metabolism is, is unhealthy from years of improper dieting, and maybe they're just unaware that they're under eating. Just to just unaware that you're under eating. Does this make sense? I need some comments here, guys. Who's online? Is this making sense? Comment below, yes, it's making sense. Comment below, can you can you tell me more about this, baby? I don't understand this. I, I need you engaged here. I need is everyone like understanding what I'm saying? Please comment below. That's the second situation where we use reverse diet. Now let's move on to the third. The third situation where we use reverse dieting is for people that have health issues. So we have a lot of people coming to us with various health issues. Again, it's not our priority or in our best interest to to put them in a fat loss phase because it's a stressor to the body. We need to focus on your health first. Your body needs to be in a happy and healthy state to lose body fat. Otherwise, you'll keep spinning your wheels. Your body will not respond. I'll give you an example. Three years ago, we did have a client, Christy. She came to us. Uh, she was overtraining and undereating. Her body shut down. She was bedridden for three months. She had chronic fatigue, adrenal fatigue. She lost her menstrual cycle. She had, she had what's called uh, adrenic, hyperadrenic parts. Syndrome. She was a high-level competitive cyclist, cyclist at a very, 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 very high level. But her thought process was, I have to just eat less and move more. But that, that unfortunately, uh, it doesn't work like that. You're actually putting your body under so much stress. When your body's under stress, it shuts down. Think about it. You've all this energy going out. Okay, all the energy going out to high intensity training every day, twice a day, you've no food coming in, you're not fueling your body, that's a recipe for disaster. You're burning the candle at both ends. Okay? So this results in what's called low energy availability. Write that down. It's L-E-A for short. So basically, your food intake is too low to compensate for the energy your energy needs. So you're not eating enough to support your energy output. This is what happened. Uh, a few, uh, lots of uh, women in fact, and a few men coming to us, and they're just stalled. So what happens? Your sex hormones bottom out. Uh, you lose your menstrual cycle. Your metabolism shuts down. 
you have adrenal dysfunction, adrenal fatigue, you get all these gut issues, okay, you have thyroid dysfunction, it's so many health issues, and the main reason is from chronic uh, under-eating for a long period of time. Comment below if you, if this is making sense, guys, if you have experienced this before. So that's the long-term consequences of low-calorie dieting, what I just said there. But basically, everything shuts down in your body, and your body is unable to perform at optimal function, basically, i.e. fat loss. So there are three types of people. There are the three situations where we use reverse dieting. I explain what reverse dieting is. So how do we put all this together, Davey? Tell me. So, how we put all this together, we break this down into three different things, we write this down. Number one, we have to increase your calorie. Okay, number two, we have to decrease your energy output, i.e. your exercise. Number three, you have to be comfortable with with gaining a little bit, little bit of weight. It's not going to be all fat because extra glycogen from carbohydrates causes water retention. And remember, 3,500 calories above your maintenance. 3,500 calories is one pound of fat. So you're not going to gain all fat, but you have to be comfortable with gaining a little bit of weight. Not fat, but weight, just the three things. So, when you're at the end of a fat loss phase, or if you're coming to us, and you're maintaining on, on 1,200 calories a day, we give you an initial boost of 300 calories. So if at the end of your fat loss phase, you ended on 1,600 calories, okay, we would straight away bump you up to 1,900 calories. Does that make sense? If you're coming to us, and at the end of your first seven days eating, your average calories is 1,200, we say, it's not in your best interest to start a fat loss phase. You've been dieting for so long, your body will not respond. So we're going to give you an initial boost of 300 calories. So we're going to start you off on 1,500 calories. Does that make sense? If you're doing all these spinning classes, F45, you're running like twice a day, six, seven days a week, we'll say, hey, we need to pull back. Your body needs rest, recovery. It needs to heal. <clears throat> your body needs to heal in order for you to recover and ultimately reach the goal. So we're going to go, instead of five spinning classes a week, we're going to bring you down to two spinning classes a week. Instead of running twice a day, we're going to say, hey, just go for some uh, walk, some, some low-intensity walks. We're going to focus more on yoga, low-intensity exercises like mobility, flexibility exercises. Women... I know this is kind of probably what everyone has told you in the past. This is going against what everyone has told you in the past. It's like you have to work out like a lunatic. You eat less to reach your results. No, unfortunately, especially for a woman, it doesn't work like that. Okay? A woman's body reacts differently. Not as simple as that. So, <clears throat> once we increase your calories by 300, the goal is to get you up to the sweet spot. My experience, the sweet spot for a woman, okay? Get her up to 1,800, 2,000 calories per day. But the secret is she needs to stay there and let all of the internal things heal. Let her body heal. I've got women up to 2,400, 2,500 calories a day in the past. And they were, even though they were petite women, five foot one, five foot two, it is possible. It, it surely, it definitely is possible. The key is to stay there. We would assess your biofeedback. We would like, hey, how is your sleep? Hey, is your, is your menstrual cycle returning? What's your strength like? What's your energy level? Do you feel motivated? What's your drive down? Well, what's your drive like? So we assess every week. How are you doing? How are you feeling? You know, we want you thriving not just surviving, okay? So that's what we do. 
And then the goal is to get you up there to 1,800, 2,000 for a woman, for a man it would be up to that 2,500 to 3,000 calories a day. That's the sweet spot. But once you get there, the key is to stay there for at least three months. The longer that you stay at maintenance, your body heals, your sex hormones uh, upregulate, your hunger hormones upregulate, your metabolic rate uh, starts turning on, the temperature starts turning back on, because your maintenance calories is a moving target. Okay, so the more food you get into you over time, your metabolism will wake up. Everyone here wants uh, uh, speed up speed up your metabolism, correct? Comment below. Do you want to speed up your metabolism? That requires more food. But you can't go from 1,200 calories straight up to 2,000 calories. No. Because if you do, you will gain weight. You will gain fat. So you have to do this slowly and incrementally. So the first bump is 300 calories. I like to give time 100 calories every two weeks or 50 calories every week. Well, obviously, we've got to do this, you know, assess the biofeedback, etc. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so, let me know, guys, if you have you any comments. I know there's a lot of people online, but I'm on Zoom. I cannot see any comments yet. Let me just say one thing. People that are very reluctant and resistant to, to reverse dieting. So taking shortcuts has got you in this mess in the first place. You know, these six week challenges, these shake diets, shake diets, these shake plans, herbal life, these fat burners, you name all the fat diets. Comment below, what fat diet have you tried? It's a shortcut, it's a quick fix. You don't learn anything, it's a band-aid, okay? You're not getting to the root of the problem. Okay, you've been dieting your whole life. You have to do this. You just do this once. Taking shortcuts, it's, it's, it's not going to get you where you want to go, ultimately. You're going to keep spinning your wheels. So the analogy that I like to use, okay? So you can write this down. I would, my goal is for everyone to learn how to diet properly. So you spend 8 to 12 months of your life learning to diet properly. Okay, eight to 12 months. You're looking at this right now and say, oh my God, Davey, I'm not spending eight to 12 months learning how to diet. Are you crazy, Davey? That's, that's just way too long. I don't have the patience. I want results now, Davey. I'm not spending eight to 12 months. No way. I, I can't afford it as well. I, mean, I, just, I want results now. I want to lose 20 pounds in six weeks, Davey. There's no way I can do this in eight to 12 months. Look at this. The average lifespan of a human is, is, is 79 years of age in the Western world. Let's round it off to 80 years of age <clears throat> for you health conscious people. So, spending eight to 12 months of your life, that's 1% of your whole life. Think about it. 1% of your whole life, so you spend the other 99% of your life happy, healthy. You have a great, great, better relationship with food. It's a no-brainer. Otherwise, you could keep doing these quick fixes, these shake plans, herbal life, everything. But uh, yes, they're cheap quick fixes, but that's what they are. They're a cheap quick fix that don't get long-lasting results. What's that going to cost you over your lifetime? Think about it. You only have to do this once. We've had clients come on the program for eight to twelve months, even two years. Okay, we've got them down, got the forty pounds off, fat loss off, instead of them going off, they understand, okay, I don't want to be one of those 95% of people who gain all the way back. I want to reverse that, so they do this once properly. And there, and there are women maintaining their weight now on 2,000 calories a day, 2,500 calories a day, maintaining their weight. They never have to diet again. Comment below, are you one of these people? If you, do you want to maintain your weight? Imagine losing 40 pounds and maintaining your weight at 2,500 calories a day. Comment below, are you one of those people? That's, that, that's the reality, guys. So we want the end goal is for you to be educated, to learn, 
a diet to do this once. That's what that's what reverse dieting is as well. So that's basically what I've covered, guys. That's what is reverse dieting. I've covered the three situations where we use reverse dieting, the three types of people, basically. I've covered the long-term consequences of low-calorie dieting. And I've covered how we all how we put this together in terms of calories, in terms of exercises, etc. Let me know if this makes sense. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to talk about metabolism really quickly. Comment below, guys. What is your metabolism like? Do you think that you have a high metabolism or an unhealthy metabolism? Let me know in the comments. I just want to share my screen here. Can you see my screen, guys? Okay. So, yeah, you can see it. Okay. This is basically metabolism I want to talk about here. So, your metabolism is made up of four different, basically, things. It's made up of your basal metabolic rate. It's called BMR. It's made up of the thermic effect of food, which is TEF. It's made up of non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is your NEAT. And your metabolism is also made up of exercise, which is your exercise activity thermogenesis, which is also called EAT. So your, meta your metabolism is basically the amount of calories that you burn each day total amount of calories that you burn each day and it's made up of these four different things so your bmr your basic metabolic rate you cannot really control this okay but you have ultimately you have a lot of control over your meat over your thermic effective foods and over your eat let's break this down so your bmr is basically the amount of calories that you burn at rest just to function as a human being, if you stayed in bed all day, basically, you would burn up to 70% of your total daily energy expenditure comes from your BMR. Just your breathing, your, your blood circulating, your, your cells regenerating. This is your BMR. That's a massive 70% of the calories, amount of calories that you burn each day comes from your BMR. So next comes in line is your NEAT. So you know, we and the coaches are always saying, you know, we have to increase your NEAT. So NEAT is basically non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So it's the energy like you're walking, you're cooking, you're cleaning, you're dancing, you're fidgeting. See the way I'm fidgeting now? That's burning calories. So that burns up to... 15%, 15% of your total calories you burn each day comes from your need. The next thing is the TEF, the, see this guy here? The thermic effect of food. So basically 15% comes from the protein. Just by eating more protein, you burn more calories. Just this is why we're always asking our clients to eat more protein. It's so important. You burn more calories than carbs and fat just by just by digesting. Your body has to digest, break down the protein. It burns more calories. And the last one, you just guy here, the last one, this is gonna shock a lot of you. Okay. Is eat. It's called exercise activity thermogenesis. So this is your one hour workout. Basically, the one hour workout you do in a day, only five, 10% at max, very, very minimal calories burned through exercise. So if you're in a skating class and you see that you burned age on the calorie a day, forget about that. You burn very little calories doing classes. Forget about 
the amount of calories that you burn. It's very, 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 very minimal. It's five percent. That's a bit shocking. Do many of the half of all? Do you think that's shocking? Did, did how little calories you burn through eat your exercise activity, thermogenesis? It's very, very minimal. This is this is what I want you to to get into your mind. So do not track calories burned. Okay, never, ever, ever, ever track calories burnt. I want you to track steps. Okay, track the amount of steps, which is your meat, right? So on my fitness pal, back your calories, back your daily protein intake. You don't eat back your calories from exercise. I see this mistake a lot from from clients. They're always eating back the exercise. Oh, I burnt five hundred calories on the bike. Forget about that. You didn't. That has come from a calorie deficit from what you eat. You should be the type of training you should be doing is strength training. Look back at your strength, your lifts, progressive overload. Remember, when you're progressively getting stronger each week, that's going to raise your metabolism. That's going to give you that muscle definition. So you never, ever, ever track your calories from a workout. Track your strength and your lifts. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments below. Guys, all of this is on uh, my app as well. If you just type into the search bar on my app, reverse dieting or calories burned, it all comes up. This PDF is here. Look, I basically, I've already went over this earlier on, but look look at this PDF over on my app. You can break everything down visually for you to understand. So here's the, the three situations where we use reverse dieting. I covered this earlier on, which is at the end of a fat loss phase. And with clients who are chronic dieters and with clients who have health issues. So, why reverse dieting? Diet, why do you, why reverse diet? Get, it, get this into your head, okay? Faster metabolism. Who wants to have a faster, healthier metabolism? Comment below. Let me know. More food freedom, flexibility. I've seen clients in a fat loss phase before, before coming to us on 900 calories a day. How on earth can you attend a ball game or a social event eating 900 calories a day? I mean, that's, that's my, my lunch. I mean, that's, that's crazy. So more energy. Who doesn't want more energy? Do you want more energy? Let me know in the comments below. Helps to restore and balance hormones. If you have a thyroid disorder, your body needs carbohydrates to function. Okay, it thrives on food. It shuts down if you don't feed it properly. Okay, who doesn't want better digestion? If you have gut issues, if you have SIBO, if you have IDS, if you have severe gut issues, everything would improve when you start eating more food, quality food. Everything upregulates. You get stronger in the gym. You get stronger, you put on muscle, which is increasing your metabolism. It improves your body composition. So you're basically thriving and you're not surviving. Here's some of the health issues I've seen down through the years. I covered this earlier on as well. I've seen lots of women in their 20s, they've lost their menstrual cycle, all amenorrhea. So no libido, again, thyroid dysfunction. Women lose their hair, men lose their hair because they're not getting the proper nutrients, enough calories or sleep, the list goes on. Now, I would say again, I did touch on this earlier on, if you're the type of person who wants right now results, like quick fixes, I wanna lose 20 pounds now, daily, now, then you're not going to have success reverse dieting if you're maintaining on a low pattern. You need to get your calories up to that sweet spot. Remember aging under 2000 calories and hang out there for as long as possible. Otherwise, you'll never recover. You'll always stay spinning the wheels. Don't get caught up in this stupid cycle of, oh, I want to lose those five pounds. So, you need to reverse diet. If you're watching this right now, if your hair is falling out, you're not sleeping, you know, you're maintaining the weight on a low pattern, the stress is high. But okay? if you've been dieting for four months or longer and you've had no diet breaks, You've had no refeed days, which is basically 
when you're eating more calories, you increase your calories through carbohydrates for a whimmy uh, three days or one week, you let your body recover. Do you need to reverse diet if you've been under eating, maybe unintentionally for a very long time, or if you've been chasing fat loss forever? Comment below, have you been chasing fat loss forever? Okay, if you've never gone to a muscle building phase, if, if you're skinny fat, if you're, if you're not overweight, okay, but you're still not as body confident as you'd like, and you want to lose your belly fat, have you ever gone to a muscle building phase? Probably not. You need to reverse diet. If you're having, if you have an obsession with the weighing scales, I know many of you do, if you have an unhealthy relationship with food, you need to reverse diet. Now, again, I did touch on this earlier on, but what happens if your metabolism adapts uh, on, on 1200 calories? You want to have to keep going lower and lower and lower. Okay, so there's no magic solution to this situation. Now, you'll see a lot online of skinny, skinny uh, teas or fix your metabolism boost uh, program. They restrict calories. They actually make your metabolism worse. They make things worse. The only thing that will restore your metabolism in the metabolic rate is a sustained period not in a calorie deficit. Here's the, uh, if you're maintaining your weight, just say you're maintaining at, at uh, 900 calories a day, your immediate bump would be 1,200, and then every two weeks, we're bringing it up by 100 and accessing your biofeedback. Okay, here's the timeline. Once you get up here, the key is to stay there. Okay, remember, we, have, we want you thriving, not surviving. So there's really, if you're one of these people who is very reluctant to do reverse dieting because you're maintaining at a low calorie intake, you're very unhealthy metabolism. You have two choices, basically. One, you can go back into a calorie deficit, which would be 800, 900 calories a day. This will lead to further metabolic damage, okay? Further damage to your hormones. It will prolong the fact that you have metabolic adaptation, which is a very slow metabolism. And you will keep yo-yo dieting and losing and gaining for the rest of your life. Or, remember earlier on, I told you, you can do this once. Spend 8 to 12 months of your life learning how to diet properly, which is 1% of your life. Okay, 1% of your life learning to diet properly. You just have to do this once. It takes longer, but it's your choice. That's basically it, guys. Is there any comments in the Facebook group? Let me just check. There is a lot of protection. There's a lot of comments that just in there now. Lola says that, yes, I regained the weight before. Oh, but I hope this is valuable for you, Lola. She went as low as 1,200 calories and needed to increase because of extreme fatigue. You know what? One thing, guys, there's, there's nothing wrong with going to 1,200 calories a day as long as you have an exit strategy. I've had, to, I've had to bring a few clients down as low as 1,100 calories a day just to get that stubborn body fat off. I bought them down for three weeks, okay? But we, we bought them back up. We got that stubborn body fat off, okay? Some people are scared to go though. It's, you need to be in a calorie deficit, but the problem is when you stay down there for so long, okay? That's when all the hormone and metabolic adaptations start happening. It's okay to go down there for a, a short period of time, but you have to have a plan to bring yourself back up. Okay, plus if you're a five foot woman, you need less calories, right? But it's so important to have that exit strategy, that reverse dieting strategy. Laura says it makes perfect sense, thank you. Veronica says it's making sense. Lola says that she's lost seven pounds in roughly six weeks with increased calories. It's been difficult for me to stick to the meal plan and to exercise, but even with not being perfect, I've lost weight. That's fantastic, Lola. You've lost seven pounds. Give yourself some credit. Give yourself a pound in the back. You've increased your calories and you've lost weight. It's just patience. Remember what I said, 1% of your life is eight to 12 months. Okay. 
But that's fantastic. I love hearing that. Lola says she's tried grapefruit diet, juicing, starvation, keto, Atkins. It's all backfired. I'm sorry to hear that, Lola. But at least now uh, you're in the right place. And I promise if you stick to what we tell you and are, are loyal and persistent and understand that it's a long-term process, you will get results. My metabolism, my metabolism is screwed up. I have hypothyroidism and just got my blood drawn so we can see where I'm at and why I feel so tired. I'm a unique case, unique case. Lola, I'll tag you in the presentation we've done a few weeks back on thyroid disorders. We need to get your body healthy first. We need to get your body at homeostasis and then we can start, um, you know, get, get your numbers right, get your blood work in a healthy place. Then we can look down the line about reducing calories, get into a, a calorie deficit and increasing energy output. But for now, it's so crucial to get your body healing, to get your body healthy. Okay. I'm going to tag you in that, in that video actually that I done. A presentation, me and Justin. So you're welcome. Very welcome. Right, that's basically it. I love uh, talking about this, I'm actually very passionate, um, but all I would say is uh, just keep uh, asking questions in this, on this video. I will actually do my very best to answer every question, but for now, thanks for watching, 45 minutes, uh, have a great weekend, thanks guys.